بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم جی اسٹوڈنٹس آئی معارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ان ٹوڈے سیشن ٹو ایکسیس اے نوٹ بک فار ٹوڈے سیشن یو کین ایکسیس کورس پیج آن مائی پرسنل ویب سائٹ آرف پار ڈاٹ می دا ادر ویز ٹو ڈاؤن لوڈ آل دا نوٹ بک فائل فرام کورس گیٹ ہب اکاؤنٹ آر ایف پی یو سی آئی ٹی اینڈ آل دا نوٹ بکس فار دس کورس آر ہاؤسڈ ان دس پبلک ڈیٹا سائنس ریپوزٹری well uh, this is the jupiter notebook dashboard running locally on my machine at port 8888 and uh, here is the notebook for lecture number 6.5 of the sixth module overview of machine learning for the course titled tools and techniques for data science the title for today's session is overview of scikit learn library my dear students in the uh, previous three sessions we have uh, performed scuba diving on the math involved behind simple and multiple linear regression we have used python's numpy library to perform linear regression tasks on different toy data sets in order to find the regression coefficients of the best fit line we performed predictions as well as evaluated the trained models now you all must be anxious to perform all these tasks using the all time famous scikit learn library but instead of straight away jumping on to using scikit learn library for linear regression and other machine learning tasks i have decided to give today's session on the uh, on the functionalities of scikit learn library Uh, and also uh, we will spend some time on on discussion of its built in toy and real world data sets so let's move on to the agenda of today's session well today we will start with a discussion on what is scikit learn and what it can do for us we will learn uh, different ways to download this library we will see different built in toy and real world data sets that comes bundled with sk learn we will also learn to download data sets from public machine learning repositories and finally we will also understand as to how we can generate random sample data sets for regression and classification tasks so let's start playing my dear students Uh, let us start with the most basic question and that is what is scikit learn or sk learn in simplest possible words scikit learn is a python machine learning library that provides a uniform framework for a wide variety of machine learning models to perform classification regression and clustering tasks it also comes with many convenience tools to perform feature scaling train test split cross validation and a variety of reporting metric functions to analyze model performance let me click this link and uh, visit the scikit-learn.org page i strongly recommend that you should spend some time and explore this informative official site of scikit learn at your own time well under this uh, uh, classification and uh, regression you will find almost all the popular supervised learning algorithms like uh, linear regression nearest neighbors sport vector machine naive bias decision trees and random forest under this uh, clustering links you will find k means db scan and gaussian mixtures uh then under this dimensionality reduction you will find algorithms like principal component analysis latent semantic analysis non negative matrix factorization and latent dirichlet allocation well my dear students a uh, pre processing package of scikit learn provides utility functions and transformer classes for for standardization normalization encoding categorical features imputation of missing values and generating polynomial features 
and finally this model selection package of scikit-learn has commonly used functions like train test split cross val predict and grid search cv uh, my dear students uh, don't worry in the due course of our video sessions on machine learning i will try my best that you will be having an in-depth knowledge of all these concepts as well as the algorithms with a hands-on practice on almost all of them finally uh let me click this uh, more drop down and visit this FAQ page having answers to a lot of frequently asked questions. Well, SKLearn is just a, a shorter version of uh, scikit-learn where sci stands for scientific and it is built on top of NumPy, SciPy and Matplotlib. Well, remember it works on uh, numeric data only therefore it expects the input feature and output labels either in a numpy n dimensional array or a scipy sparse matrix and uh, remember as of today scikit-learn does not directly work with pandas data frame so you need to convert uh, the data inside the pandas data frame to a numpy or scipy object mm, fine uh, moreover, uh, this uh, uh, SKLearn has no support for deep learning or reinforcement learning. Uh, uh, remember, for that you need to use PyTorch, Keras, or TensorFlow. However, Scikit-Learn currently implements a simple multi-layer perceptron uh, using its uh, uh, neural network package. And of course, you can use the uh, multiple cores of your CPU using the n jobs hyperparameter. However, till date, uh, uh, this GPUs or graphical processing unit support is not available in scikit-learn. Well, uh, my dear students, normally you will come across one classifier and one regressor for every machine learning model. For example, the CN tree classifier has the corresponding decision tree regressor. However, for linear models, there are many estimator classes which are very close to each other, uh, like uh, linear regression, uh, ridge, lasso, elastic net, and SGD regressor. Inshallah, in our upcoming video sessions, we will discuss these in detail. Well, uh, do go through this page at your own time. It contains a lot of important questions whose answers you should be knowing. And let me fall back to Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I think enough of a kickstart on the question, what is scikit-learn? Let's move ahead. My dear students, I think now you all must be anxious enough to install and use SKLearn's learning regression, uh, linear regression, as well as the gradient descent regressor, which we uh, have been doing since uh, using uh, NumPy in our previous three sessions. Uh, well, uh, installation is of course a simple task, uh, but let me click this link for completeness. Uh, well, if you want to contribute to project, uh, click this link. Uh, build the package from source. Uh, go through this page, download the source from GitHub, check out the dependencies, build, install and enjoy. Okay, let me click this link to fall back. Uh, to install the binaries of the stable scikit-learn version, uh, you can simply use uh, uh, pip or maybe conda. And here is a dependencies list to install the minimum version of uh, scikit-learn. Uh, the latest version of sklearn as of today is 1.2 and you should be watchful for all the dependencies for that version. Let me fall back to the Jupyter Notebook and uh, let me check out the current version of uh, Python right now. It is 3.8.8. .8. And uh, we have already installed NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. Let's check out the version of these. 
numpy is 1.23.4 scipy is 1.9.3 and matplotlib is 3.6.2 so these are the minimum requirement for uh, scikit-learn 1.1 mentioned over here oh, well let me click this link to install a uh, scikit-learn and right now the version is 1.1.3 uh, well, uh, let me move ahead. Uh, and remember, my dear students, uh, scikit-learn comes with many built-in datasets. Uh, let's talk about the uh, toy datasets first. Let me click this link. So here are the uh, six uh, toy datasets. Uh, please go through the details of these datasets from this page at your own time. Uh, remember having uh, ready-made datasets is a huge asset because you can get straight away to uh, to creating models uh, without spending time in obtaining cleaning and transforming the data so these are different datasets for uh, classification as well as for uh, regression task and their details let me once again fall back to uh, to the Jupyter notebook uh, well, uh, these toy datasets are broadly classified or divided into uh, two main categories. Uh, Boston house prices, diabetes, and linear datasets can be used for uh, for regression. Uh, while this, uh, I think Boston uh, house prices dataset has gone obsolete. Uh, that's why you might not have seen it in the toys dataset web page. Uh, for the classification task, we have the iris plants dataset, optical recognition uh, for handwritten uh, digits, wine recognition, and breast cancer dataset. Okay, uh, let's make our hands dirty to load and explore one of these datasets for which uh, I think we need to import uh, appropriate loader. Let me do, do that from sklearn dot datasets I need to import well uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, datasets that you can load the toy datasets can be loaded using the load underscore followed by the uh, name of the dataset let's load the diabetes dataset okay uh, I, I i will be doing just a, a exploration of the diabetes data set and later you can explore other data set on the same lines okay let me call this load diabetes method load diabetes method and let me show you its return type which I am storing in this variable named diabetes uh, so uh, this is a bunch object sklearn bunch object now the question is what is uh, a bunch object actually is uh, don't worry uh, think of it just like uh, a, a, a dictionary and if it is a dictionary you can check out uh, all the keys uh, by calling the keys method diabetes dot keys okay so these are the keys data target frame description feature name file name and so on uh, let's first check out uh, the values associated with the first key and that is uh, data uh, you can say diabetes dot uh, get and the name of the key that is data uh, note that it has returned the input features of uh, this data set as a numpy array so this is a numpy array you can use the get method you can also <coughs> use uh, the straight bracket notation as well as you can uh, use the dot notation simplest of all Anyway, so this has returned the uh, a numpy array containing all the data uh, in a in a 
having one, two, three, and so on to this. I think there are uh, roughly uh, 10 features, if I'm not wrong. Well, if you feel more comfortable to visualize your data set in a Pandas data frame, uh, you can pass uh, an, a parameter to this as frame is equal to true. If you do it this way, you will get a data frame. Now you can better visualize the 10 input features and 442 records or observations. Let me check out the target column now. Diabetes.target. So this target is the next key. We have seen data. Now this is the next key target. It would have returned a numpy array, but since we have passed as frame is equal to true over here to the loader, so it has returned a, a series object now uh, containing uh, 442 uh, output uh, label values. And similarly, uh, you, you can check the values corresponding to other keys of this uh, sklearn bunch object uh, like uh, uh, feature names so these are the feature names 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 10 feature names let me check out for a data file name so this returns actually the location and name of the compressed csv file containing the data being imported uh, let me check out the target file name and uh, this returns the location and name of the compressed CSV file containing the target or label being imported and finally let me uh, show you the description as well diabetes.descr great uh, so this shows that there are uh, 10 columns 10 input features uh, age in years, sex, body mass index and average blood pressure and then we have uh, these six uh, uh, blood serum measurements details are shown over here. If we move up and uh, uh, see the values of this data frame having 10 columns of uh, input feature. Uh, you can observe that each of these 10 feature variables have been uh, mean centered and scaled by standard deviation times the square root of all the samples. Uh, in simple words, a sum of squares of each column uh, totals uh, 1. And this is because uh, the scaled parameter of loader function has a default value of true. Uh, let me move up uh, to the loader function and set it to false. Scaled is equal to false. Uh, remember, uh, you can press shift tab to get help about uh, this function. Do make time to read it. And uh, let me call this load diabetes method with the scaled is equal to false and run these and now great. You can see the values under different columns are not scaled now. Note the sex column. Uh, now has a value of either 1 or 2. Similarly, you can see the actual age value in years and so on. Great job done. Uh, my dear students, uh, on the same pattern, uh, uh, please make time and explore the remaining toy data sets as well. And let me move ahead to, to the real world data sets. Uh, my dear students, uh, like the toy data set, sklearn comes bundled with some uh, real world data sets. Uh, let me click this link to see them. Uh, so these are the nine uh, uh, data sets. First eight are for classification while uh, this last one, uh, California housing is for regression. Uh, do make time to read details of uh, all these uh, data sets uh, well at uh, the very end 
if I go on to the end, RCV1, KD Cup, well, uh, at the very end, we have this California housing data set. Since we are mainly concerned uh, right now about uh, the, uh, the regression, so this is the regression data set. This data set was actually derived from the 1990 US census, having uh, a one row per census block group, where a block group typically has a population of 600 to 3000 people. Do read it. Let me fall back to the notebook. Uh, and let me explore the California housing data set. And for that, first I need to load it from sklearn dot data sets. We need to import. Uh, uh, my difference uh, for the real world data set, uh, the function name starts with uh, fetch underscore. So we are interested in uh, uh, California housing. So let me import this. Uh, let me now just say California is equal to fetch California housing and let me now this time set this as frame is equal to true and there is uh, another argument that is download if missing you can set it to true if not already downloaded it will be downloaded press shift tab to get the help do go through this help page and uh, let me again check the type of this California variable which is the return type of this uh, 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 fetch California housing method once again it is a bunch type of object and uh, this time let me uh, let me straight away uh, create our data frame object having all the input features as well as the target column and for that let me import pandas as pd and uh, let me say create our data frame pd dot uh, data frame and to this i am passing california dot data and for the columns uh, I'm passing the names of the columns California dot feature names and uh, this will bring in all the input features in the data frame I also want to put in uh, the price which is the target column so let me say df let me name, name it price is equal to California dot target and let me show you the data frame great so there are eight input features and one output label that is uh, price uh, and a total of uh, 20,640 rows uh, the target or price column uh, over here represents the median house value for California districts expressed in hundred thousand uh, dollar the feature columns are uh, this median income in block group, median house age in block group, average number of uh, rooms per household, average number of bedrooms plus per household, and this is the block group population. This is average number of household members, and this is the block group latitude and longitude. Uh, well, remember latitude and longitudes are are used to determine the location of any place on earth and these are measured in degrees and uh, finally we have this uh, price column which has been appended at the very end uh, let me check out the info on this data frame So all the columns have uh, float 64 data type and none of the cells under any column has uh, none or uh, empty value. So the data set is ready to be fed to a machine learning algorithm for, for regression task. Uh, well, my dear students, uh, please once again do make time to explore and understand the remaining uh, real world data sets. And I move ahead. 
Well, uh, since machine learning has been developed for decades, so there are many well-known public repositories like uh, Kaggle.com uh, datasets. Let me click this. Uh, you can search for a data set. Let me let me search for uh, let's pay, let's suppose ImageNet or Sketch. Okay. Oh uh, well, uh, this ImageNet Sketch data set is of huge size. You can see it is of fifteen uh, GB. I recommend to use Kaggle's uh, command line tool after registering for an account to download such large data set. Otherwise, smaller data set can be downloaded easily. Let's fall back to the notebook. Uh, another famous repository is the UCI machine learning repository. Let me click this link. Well, over here, once again, you can search for a data set of your choice. There are a lot of data sets that are available over here. And finally, we have uh, uh, the Open ML. Well, this uh, uh, Open ML is a newer repository that hosts a lot of data sets. Let me click this link. Data sets. You can search once again for our data set by name or maybe by ID. Let me let me search for the famous Titanic data set. Well, the advantage of using OpenML repository is that it also provides a standardized web API uh, for the users to retrieve data. And scikit-learn provides a fetch underscore open ML method to download data sets by, by, giving the, by giving the name and version of the data set. Okay, let's fall back once again to Jupyter Notebook. Uh, and let me uh, let me uh, download the Titanic dataset from OpenML this time. <clears throat> let me say from SK Learn import datasets. And let me show you all the uh, symbols that have been imported from this datasets module. Uh, you can see the uh, the load functions, the load methods, as well as uh, many uh, fetch methods that we have already used. And uh, the method of our concern is mm, this fetch underscore open ML that is used to fetch data set from open ML by, by name or maybe by uh, the data set ID. Let's do that. Let me say uh, Titanic. Uh, I need to do fetch underscore open. So this is not there. So let me say data sets dot fetch underscore open so this is the method okay and let me pass the name uh, that is titanic and let me pass the version let's say the version is one uh, if you are fetching uh, by data set name you need to give the version as well as there can be multiple versions of the same data set well uh, another option is to use the data set ID which uniquely identifies every data set. Uh, so let me do this and uh, let me once again say type Titanic. Let me execute. So we have got the bunch object. Let's check out the keys. Titanic dot keys. Sorry for the typos. <coughs> well, uh, these are all the keys. Uh, the details and URL are the new keys over here. Uh, let's check out the value corresponding to the uh, URL key first. Titanic.URL as the name implies. 
it gives you the url let me say titanic dot details great good amount of information about the titanic data set is available over here let us now load it in a pandas data frame for a better visual display of the data let me say df is equal to pd dot data frame and let me say uh, titanic dot data input features columns is equal to titanic dot uh, feature names and let me add up uh, the target column as well and name it uh, just target this time titanic dot target okay great oh well uh my dear students this is the famous titanic data set having uh 1310 rows uh, remember this starts from zero uh, with 13 uh, input feature columns and one target or uh, the label column at the very end it shows information about the titanic ship that sank in north atlantic ocean in 1912 after striking with an iceberg you might have seen the titanic movie as well well the features are uh, first is p class that is the passenger class having float values that correspond to the first second and the third class then we have the name of the passenger which is of string or object data type uh, sex is a categorical variable having two values male or female this is age uh, number of siblings or spouse abroad and the number of parents or children abroad these are uh, again a float type then we have the uh, ticket ticket number this seems to be an integer column then we have fare fare column is in float i think and its unit is uh, british pounds of course uh, uh, pre-1970 this cabin shows the cabin number seems to be a string this embarked column is a categorical variable and shows the port from where the passenger has embarked. Uh, this S uh, is for Southampton. This C is for Cherbourg and uh, one that is not uh, visible over here in this screenshot. It is Q that means Queenstown. Well this uh, boat means lifeboat and this uh, body column has some body identification number. And of course the final input feature is uh, home dot uh, uh, destination uh, well the output label is uh, this uh, target column uh, with two categorical values one means survived and zero means not survived okay let me check out the uh, null and the non null values tf dot info okay uh, so there do exist null values under different columns uh, my dear friends this will be an interesting problem as we have to do quite a bit of data pre-processing before we can feed uh, this data to some classification model uh, don't worry we will inshallah do this while learning uh, the uh, maybe the logistic regression Okay, do make time to download and explore other data sets from ML, uh, OpenML repository at your own time. And uh, let me move to uh, this uh, final task and that is uh, random sample generators. Oh, my dear students, uh, scikit-learn also has different uh, uh, random sample generators that can be used to build artificial data sets to of controlled uh, size and, and complexity as well. Uh, do visit this link at your own time for details and let me generate a random data set that you can use for uh, for the regression task and let me say that from sklearn import data sets and this time The function is make there are a lot of make functions that are used to uh, generate uh, random data sets and right now I am interested in the 
regression so make underscore regression this is a method you can press shift tab to get the help the first is n underscore samples uh, sample size number of uh, features actually let me pass eight over here and uh, next is n underscore features this is the feature size that is uh, how many features do you need i just need three features let me add some noise uh, well uh, uh, this noise actually uh, by adding it you are saying that uh, you uh, you add the standard deviation of the gaussian noise uh, uh, that is applied to the output uh, by default it is zero and optionally you can also specify the number of uh, regression targets let me say n underscore targets is equal to one the default value is also one and finally let me add a random state uh, of let's suppose five four well my difference uh, uh, we normally pass an integer to the random state parameter to generate the uh, same output across multiple function calls and uh, this method actually returns an array of x and y well uh, x is an array or x will be an array containing the features and uh, y will be an array containing the output targets let's verify this by printing the x array as well as the y array <coughs> excuse me uh, well so we have eight samples uh, each having uh, one two three three features and of course the corresponding eight output labels great i hope this makes sense okay let's now generate uh, a random data set that we can use for classification task and for that i say x comma y is equal to datasets dot make underscore classification and once again the parameters are first parameter is n samples let me say that we need 10 samples and underscore features and let me say we need five features and underscore classes and let's say that we go for binary classification and finally the random state is equal to 5 4 you can give any integer value let me execute it and let me show you the x and the y array so we have once again now uh, 10 samples each having five features and uh, uh, over here we have the corresponding 10 output labels having two classes 0 or 1 great job done my difference uh, uh, in today's session i have tried to give you a kick start on sk learn library especially about its built-in data sets we will keep exploring more as we will proceed further in this module of uh, machine learning if you have liked it uh, please subscribe my youtube channel and share it with your friends i wish you all the best happy learning and Allah Hafiz.